Dearest family and friends, beloved of God, today we have gathered to remember and to grieve and give thanks to celebrate the life of Winona Marlene Haydu. It is my privilege to welcome you here this day to Northminster United Church, your, your, your family's church home. My name is Reverend Nancy Norse. I'm the minister here at Northminster. Um, and today, um, you are worshiping from near and far, um, in person and online, as a four-generation family. And Indeed, this is a place that has been very close to Winona's heart for so many years. There is a much smaller group of us here today because of COVID restrictions. Her children are here and their spouses. Some of her grandchildren are here. And Jim is here with us today, her husband of almost 64 years We need to all take a moment to just imagine this space overflowing with all of her extended family, her church family, her friends, her neighbors, had this not been during a pandemic. And of course, we need to acknowledge who are here today watching with us online. Thank you for being here in this way, and we invite you, if you are able, to leave a comment on the Facebook comment section, Uh, perhaps leave a memory or offer a prayer in that news feed so we know that you are watching. I'm going to invite now Jennifer to come forward to um, light our candles for us here this morning. As we remember and light these candles, we we do this um, remembering how Winona has been a light to us here amidst her family and her friends. And although Winona is no longer physically present here with us, the goodness that was unique to Winona still shines brightly before God and us. As we light the Christ candle, we remember that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Winona has been a light to us, and so we remember and celebrate her light and life. And we remember and celebrate the eternal life that is for all of us through Jesus Christ. We give thanks today that she now knows that unending light and life. And we also celebrate what is central in our Christian faith, that in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, and we are not alone. Let's pray. Holy God, creator of all life, whose ways and thoughts are beyond our understanding, We thank you that your spirit touches our lives in all of life's joys and celebrations and challenges and transitions. We ask in this time that you heal our hearts. Assure us again that eye has not seen nor ear heard nor human mind imagined what you have prepared for those who go to you. In our sharing and our remembering of Winona, help us, God, to express all of the emotions which can be a reality at a time like this. Grief, emptiness, regret, thanks, relief. Help us to acknowledge our loss and to offer hope and support and strength and encouragement to one another. We entrust Winona to you in death as in life. You entrusted her to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite Tracy now to come forward. Tracy will be singing our solos for us this morning. And all of the music you hear today were favorites that Winona chose for us to hear. So let us enjoy and remember Winona as Tracy sings Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
Now for our first scripture reader today, our first scripture reading, Michelle, one of Winona's granddaughters, will be reading for us. We often hear 1 Corinthians 13 read at weddings for it speaks of love. But when Paul wrote these words more than 2,000 years ago, it was intended to speak not about romantic love, but the love of early Christians and the life they were being called to. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. 
Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And to help us with our remembering, we invite now Kim Winona's son to share with us at this time. This is a reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, 4, and part of 6. As chosen by Mom and I. <sighs> that I will be reading from the Bible that Mom has had since 1956. And it's titled, Change of Time. To everything there is a season a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to keep and a time to let go. I also want to, at this time, acknowledge those people that are watching online Mom has family and friends in Calgary, her two brothers and wives and families in Saskatchewan, and in the Toronto area, a granddaughter, and a cousin of dad's. Also in Slovakia, all of dad's cousins are also watching. Mom's impact on people is not only here in Calgary and across Canada, but also more or less halfway around the world. We are gathered here today in this church and online to celebrate the life and memory of Winona Marlene Haydu, our mother, wife, daughter, sister, aunt, cousin, grandmother, and great-grandmother. She has a lot of hats. So that together we may acknowledge and share both our joy in the gift of mom's life is to us and the pain that her passing brings in sharing the joy and the pain together today, may we lessen that pain and remember more clearly the joy. Mom was born on February 27, 1938 in Star City, Saskatchewan in a nursing home to Helen and Lester Lyons. She grew up on a farm in the Berlin district, which is just south of Valparaiso, Saskatchewan with her parents, Helen and Lester, and her two brothers, Ron and Barry. Mom attended Berlin and Arpsville Country School and the Star City High School. And in 1954, 
mom went to Regina to attend Belfort Tech, which in fact is still in use today. In October of 1956, mom arrived in Calgary to work at the Boness United Church, now known as Foothills United, <clears throat> pardon me, and lived with her Aunt Eva and Uncle Till in Boness until moving into Calgary to live with family friends, Jesse and Slim Russell. In 1956, she started working as a teletype operator for the Alberta government telephones, now known as TELUS. And in 1957, <clears throat> Mom married a dashing young man, our dad, James George Haydu Jr. Mom was 83 years old when she passed away <clears throat> on May 30th, 2021 in Calgary. <clears throat> we all feel blessed that at the time of Mom's passing, our brother Warren was able to take dad up to see mom for a few hours and dad was able to hold her hand for a while as they were now in the same care facility after being apart for almost 11 months. We are also thankful that Lori Ann was with mom at the time of her passing so that mom didn't have to go into her next life without somebody beside her. Winona is survived by her husband of 64 years, Jim, her five children, Kim, Diane, Warren, Wayne, and Devin, and their spouses, Lori, Dave, Sylvia, Debbie, and Lori Ann. Her 10 grandchildren, Michelle, Lindsay, Robin, Adam, Lana, Jennifer, Megan, Colleen, Michael, and Brianne, and six great-grandchildren, Evan, Claire, Rachel, Ashley, Kale, Aurora, and one yet to be born. It's hard to say goodbye as a family. We wished we could have been with mom more during the last months and weeks, but due to COVID restrictions, we could not be with her during her time of great need and comfort to give her our love and support. But knowing mom, she bravely faced her illnesses head on by herself. <sighs> and she fought for life until there was no light, no fight left in her. Oh, gee whiz. We wish that so much of her life had not been lost to Parkinson's, that things could have been different for her and for us. While we know that she is at peace and that her struggles are at an end, there is still pain and sadness. Even though mom is gone, she has left a legacy of her love and perseverance. It's hot up here. Excuse me. The way she touched our lives will remain, and I ask that all of you keep those memories alive by sharing them. One of the most important things in, mom, in mom's life was her family. She was always concerned about us, making sure that we were properly dressed, well-fed, and doing well in our lives. Mom was also wanting to know, Mom was always wanting to know how her children were doing, how our spouses were doing, how her grandchildren and great-grandchildren were doing. Mom put everyone before herself. I've seen this firsthand when I would spend time with her day and night at the Huntington Hills Manor. She put aside her ill feelings, fears, and, anx and anxiety, and was more concerned about making sure that everyone got their birthday cards and gifts for whatever occasion was coming around. Mom was upset that she may not be able to get gifts for her husband, Jim, for his past birthday. This was very important to her, more important than her own ill feeling. And we as a family made sure that dad got gifts and signed a card from mom and having mom know this seemed to put her at ease and a time to take care of herself. Another important thing in mom's life is this very church, North Minister United. When she was able, mom always volunteered 
whether it was serving lunches for funerals, turkey suppers, fall fair, the prayer chain, or fashion shows in the early years of the church that us kids somehow got to be a part of by becoming amateur models and walking across the stage downstairs. And every Saturday night or Sunday morning before church, and I did this last night, we had to polish our shoes. And let me tell you, there were no exceptions on that. Mom was also proud to be part of the United Church Women's Group, which is called the UCW. In this church, in this church as well as other United Churches, and was honored to become a lifetime member of the UCW. And we have a picture of that very occasion on the communion table here today. Mom was so proud of her relationship with the ladies in the UCW that on Mother's Day of this year, our sister Diane took cards and gifts from us, Dad and the ladies from the UCW. Mom pushed aside our cards and wanted Diane to read the cards from the UCW ladies to her first. The words from these ladies, as Diane said, seem to put mom at ease, and we are so thankful for that. Mom, after raising five of her own kids, and I'm sure that would have been more than enough for any mother after us five, I think mom missed the hustle and bustle and commotion of having small children around. So she was very proud to open and run her own day home for many years and help to raise many more children during that time. Many from the, her own community of Winston Heights, Mount View. And mom also looked after many of her own grandchildren during the day and did it without hesitation. But that's who mom was and that's what made her special. She looked after family. And it's amazing to see and hear the stories of the young lives that mom has touched over the years. Um, mom was also known by different variations of her names, all said with love and respect. One I just love, it was Sister Known, or Known, or Hey Known. I can hear all those words in my head by the people that said them and by the people who repeated them. And it brings great joy to my heart. Mom even had a boat named after her, but Mom even had a boat that our dad made by himself named after her, the Nona Lynn. And I'm not sure where the Lynn part fits in. Maybe it just sounded good to Mom and Dad. Mom loved to garden, and her gardens in the front and back of the house were evidence of that. Mom was so proud of how all her flowers in the backyard looked. She spent a lot of time making sure her gardens were just right. Mom's clematis in the backyard was her crowning achievement. She, she had that plant at over eight feet tall last year and had lovely purple flowers on it. Mom always said, did you see how big that clematis is? She was so proud of that plant. In the front yard, she had tulips. Every year there was an abundance of tulips of different colors growing in the front. Mom always asked if we had ever if we ever Mom always asked if we had driven by and saw her tulips and of course we had and it was a sight to see Earlier this year when I had mom out for one of her appointments she asked if we could drive by her house to see her tulips and I could tell that I could tell that mom was in pain but we drove by anyways And when mom saw all her tulips up but there no blooms yet Mom commented on the fact that this was going to be a lovely crop of tulips this year. Mom seemed to be at ease that after seeing her plants. I think this gave mom a sense of achievement and as every spring does, the thought of new life and hope. Other things that mom liked was, well, she didn't like to iron clothes, but every Saturday afternoon, she would do ironing while watching Stampede Wrestling. And with, and with us kids when we weren't outside playing. Mom liked the good guys and the bad guys and all the antics that went along with wrestling and, and on numerous occasions would be yelling at the TV when, not, when one of the good guys was getting roughed up by more than one of the bad guys. Something else mom loved was curling. Every spring she would be watching the Scotties Tournament of Hearts for the women and the Briar for the men. 
Mom could tell you who was playing on what team. She knew all the player stats and team standings and the rules. If you had a question, there was only one person to call. It was Mom. But best be careful when you called her, and my wife Lori knows this, that if it wasn't at the fifth end break or after the curling game had finished, you were going to get an earful. Phone call would go like, what do you want? Can't talk long. You would get, a sh you would get your very short, angry sounding answer. And then it was, gotta go, curling's back on. Call me back later. <laughs> Mom loved that game so much that she spent the entire week at the Saddle Dome when the briar was here, along with her mom, Helen. And I was lucky that on occasions, I also got to go. Mom would also go to Red Deer when the curling was in the city was in that city, or to Regina with her mom, and had her brother Barry drive them back and forth from the curling rink every day. Another story that I remember that mom would tell us is the time when her brothers, Ron and Barry, while she was babysitting them on the farm, locked her in the root cellar, and the two of them went off and did whatever it was they were going to do, likely riding horses. She would laugh about it and say, oh, those darn little beggars. Another story told to me is of a time when mom was going to drive the big grain truck on the farm and it had a stick shift on the floor. I was very concerned if mom was able to drive this big grain truck. Well, she knew how and she did drive that truck and it was probably full of grain going to the elevator in town. Mom, as it turned out, was a very capable woman. I have a quote and a letter from two of the ladies in this church that mom was friends with that I would like to share with you. And the quote is, Nona was such a beautiful prairie woman, so genuine, so authentic, and so practical and smart. And this letter that I received in the mail addressed to mom and my sister Diane took it up to mom while she was in the hospital to read it to her. We are not sure if mom was aware of this letter being read to her, but nonetheless, it was read to her. And it goes, Dear Winona, you have prayed for so many of us over the years and gave us so much of yourself to keep our prayer chain going. You encouraged and gave us wisdom in your struggles. Now we try to return encouragement to you. It is hard to be in the hospital, especially during this time when friends can't visit. May the blessings you bestowed on others return to you tenfold, and may you feel the love and prayers that surround you. God's blessings. Thinking of you often and wishing you strength and peace, know that many friends hold you up in prayer and loving thoughts, with love and happy memories of times spent around your table for tea. I'm also going to read a card from a friend in, of mom's from this church, that unfortunately never made it in time for mom to, to read or hear it. So I, will, so I will read it to mom now. And it goes, Dear Winona, I'm glad to hear you moved to the Brentwood. I wish I could visit you. I have my pots all planted now. All we need is some sunshine so that the flowers will grow. Take care until we can see each other again. Know that you and Jim are always in my thoughts and prayers with lots of love. It's stories like these, quotes and letters and the cards of condolences that we have received that we all hold dear to our hearts that will remind us of the kind, loved, and loving, capable woman that mom was. It will also remind us of the impact that mom had on other people's lives and also of the void that has been left in our lives of mom's passing. It will help us keep the joy and spirit of mom's life alive for many years to come. In the two months before mom's passing, while mom was at the Rocky View Hospital, our sister Diane was the only one allowed in to see her and be with mom due to COVID rules. Mom would mention to Diane that she could see her mom and dad and her Aunt Muriel, 
who are all waiting for mom to come and join them for a tea party. My faith and all of our faith, we believe in what mom was saying. So mom, we are all glad and rejoice in knowing that you have finally made it to your well-earned tea party. Even though we are sad and grieving at your passing, Mom, we all rejoice in knowing that your pain and suffering is now over and that you will enjoy eternal life in God's kingdom. Jeez. In the times that I would spend with Mom, I can see just as well. <laughs> she mentioned to me that at the end of her eulogy, she wanted the 23rd Psalm, the Psalm of David, read. And I will be reading that Psalm from Mom's Bible. You may join me if you wish. The words will be familiar. Mom, bless her heart, even highlighted it for me here. <laughs> and this is her Bible, 1956. Oops, sorry, boys. The Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou, art, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Kim. And another scripture reading in our time together is read by Lindsay, a granddaughter of Winona's. Listen to these words from John 15, words from Jesus said amidst the Last Supper. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not, does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, 
so that God will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. So even after 2,000 years, this passage we just heard from the Gospel of John has lost none of its power. The setting is the Last Supper, and there's this sense of urgency as Jesus is saying goodbye to his friends. At the Last Supper, Jesus knows he only has a short time left to teach his disciples. And what he wants to teach them about is that priority of love. And so Jesus teaches them about that priority of love in his actions and in his words. He teaches them about the priority of love when he gets down on his knees and he washes their feet, the feet of each disciple. And it was this care-filled, nurturing moment between Jesus as he washed their tired, achy, dusty feet. Likely that's the same kind of touch that you gave Winona as you helped her in these last weeks and months. After he's finished, Jesus says to his disciples, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to offer, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example that you should do as I have done to you. Jesus tells his friends, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love. So right till the end, Jesus is teaching them about that priority of love. And those who followed him continued that priority. And we heard that in the first scripture we heard this morning from 1 Corinthians, that the greatest of these is love, it says. Of course, it's hard for the disciples to accept that Jesus was going to die. In the midst of their sadness, though, and their fear, Jesus promises them that death will not break the love they have for one another. That death will not break the love they have for one another. Remember those words, love will not break that love that you have for each other, that Winona had for you, that you had for her. Jesus promises that he is going ahead to prepare a place for them. Jesus tells them that they know the way to the place that he is going, and by Winona's faith, she knows that place as well. Another story from the Bible. Do you remember Mary and Martha? The story of Mary and Martha And I think the life of Winona tells us some things that are very important about the life and the priority of love. Along with their brother Lazarus, they were very close friends with Jesus. There's a story about the two sisters in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is visiting the home of Mary and Martha as they would have been together in many occasions. Martha's trying to be a good host, so As Luke politely puts it, she was distracted, it says, by her many tasks. You can imagine her busyness, getting everything just right. Meanwhile, her sister Mary sits at Jesus' feet, listening and teaching, listening to his teaching, and not lifting a finger to help her sister. 
And finally, Martha can't take it anymore, and she complains to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Pretty reasonable request, right? You've all hosted many large gatherings as a family, so you can likely relate to the many tasks associated and sharing the workload. But Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. And Martha, or Mary, Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. So often people will interpret that this story is divided into the Marthas, the doers, and the Marys, the spiritual. But that can't be right, can it? Because we're all called to be doers and to be spiritual. We saw that as a perfect combination in Winona's life. The story of Mary and Martha is really just about priorities, of staying centered on what is so important in life. It's a story about the priority of love, love of Jesus and love of one another. And Winona was certainly a person who understood that priority of love. We heard many of those stories shared by Kim this morning. You are all uh, no doubt having hearts overflowing with memories and how her life was just so centered on her family and her friends and her faith her love of hosting and sharing and welcoming and making a difference for someone, her church community where she helped others know God's love, and that was through her things like prayer chain coordination and her being part of pastoral care and all the ways she'd serve our church, her knitting of mittens all year for the craft table in November and her lifelong membership at UCW, her coordinating meals and events like the Turkey Supper, Um, Easter egg uh, fundraising too, I think, um, in the spring those years ago. And of course, that love that filled her heart to overflowing while she did that. Most certainly as well, her family. There wasn't a visit I didn't have where she was giving me updates about you all and how your families were changing and growing and what you were all doing and how she loved so much to hear of an arrival of another grandchild or great-grandchild and all the babies in her extended family. There are so many reasons that you are remembering today her priority of love often expressed through delicious baking like her scones or the bread and bun she'd make for her family to last the week or nuts and bolts at Christmas. Um, I don't know about you, but I loved her hot iced tea she'd offer you when you came to visit. I always loved the hot iced tea she offered. (laughs) But just those little ways and those committed ways and those creative ways that she showed everyone she knew that priority of love in her life. So there's so many ways that we're celebrating today her love and care for others. All of us here know that love and that life that Winona lived. And you know that loving service that she offered her her family, her friends, her church, right to the end. She never forgot that priority of love. Winona's long journey, her life journey on earth, has come to an end. And she's in that place prepared for her by Jesus, experiencing the fullness of God's love. For us, however, that journey continues. That life and teachings of Jesus calls us to that same priority of love. And the life and the example that Winona showed us is that it really is possible here and now to live a life in which the priority is love. Amen. Let's join our hearts and minds together now in a moment of prayer. Let's pray. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you for Winona. We praise you for the gifts of her life, for all in her that 
It was kind and unique and practical and generous for the love and care she gave and received for all that lives on through those who knew and loved her. In this time, God, we hold in our hearts memories of Winona. We pray that nothing good in her life be lost, but be remembered and be of benefit to our world, that everything she valued will continue to mean more to us. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Her soul is bound up in ours forever, and for this we give thanks. We see Winona now with the eye of memory. We give thanks that she now lives with you, God, gathered in your embrace, the journey ending in the place we call heaven. God, we pray in this time for Winona's family and her friends, especially for Jim, Diane, Kim, Warren, Wayne, and Devin, for their spouses and families, also Winona's siblings, her extended family, and for all who, who grieve. Help them know your comfort, your love, through the support of others. And guide us all as we seek to offer support and care and healing to all who feel this loss. For these prayers spoken and the prayers we hold in our hearts, we lift them to God. Let us join our voices in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's now enjoy another hymn that Winona chose for us to share in today. What a friend we have in Jesus.
Thank you, Tracy. Our blessing to end our time together this morning. As Winona knew Jesus as a friend in her life, may we too take inspiration from the glimmer of the divine that we see when we live our lives for others and with others. We do this and know this same inspiration today, especially as we remember the life of Winona Marlene Haydu. And into the freedom of wind and sunshine and into the dance of the stars and the planets, into the breath and the hand of God, we commend her this day to God's grace and light and life everlasting. In gratitude for Winona and for the Holy One, from this moment we live our lives with a surer faith, a greater hope, and a more steadfast love. Amen. Let's now end our time together by, by listening to a song that Sarah is going to play for us, Open Up the Pearly Gates. to wait for direction from Sharon as to our next steps to making our way to the cemetery.